Welcome to our new show, Transparency in Government. The premise behind this show is that we want to know what our government's doing. We want them to tell us what we need to know. We want to be able to ask questions so we understand. And there's not often enough time for that in a regular setting for meeting, a visit with one of the uh, politicians, if you're lucky enough to get that, excuse me. Um, so Transparency in, in Government is going to fill that need for you. And what we're going to do today is start off with our town administrator, town manager, I'm sorry. I've been through town managers, town administrators. Um, Kevin Smith, if you don't know, Kevin, you've been with us how long now? It's been about nine months now, Dolly. Wow, yeah. okay. Time flies yes, when you're does. having fun, as they say. <laughs> it certainly does. And Kevin, I'd like for you to give a little background as to um, your relationship with London Dairy over the years. Sure. Well, um, first off, thanks for having me on the show. It's it's great to come on and talk about our local government and certainly the more things that we can do to inform people about what's going on in their town and uh, disseminate information I think mm -hmm. is a great idea. So I, I appreciate you having me on. Um, uh, obviously, I'm very familiar with the town of London Dairy. This is where I grew up most of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, my family moved here in 1986. Uh, they still live in town today. Um, my wife, Susie, who I've been married to for 11 years now, um, she also grew up in London Dairy, mm -hmm. is actually a native of London Dairy, um, and her family uh, still lives in town as well. Um, in, you know, when I applied for the position last well, it was actually almost more than a year now when, mm -hmm. they, when uh, they started, started doing yeah. the search. Yeah. Um, I had told the town council at the time, I said, there's, there's no other town I'd rather be town manager in than the town of Londonderry mm -hmm. um, because I love this town. Uh, it's a great community. It was, uh, it was great to me growing up and having gone through the school system. And I still uh, was connected to the town through doing the announcing of the football games yes, on, yeah. on Friday night. Um, and in fact, I've got a connection here to this studio as well. Yes, you do. Um, from you know the the early days of coming in, I think during the the Santa Claus mm -hmm. um, yeah. visits, and yeah. then uh, doing a, later on in life doing a sports show with yep. Mr. Galician yep. uh, uh, and uh, Jay Gratton, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we did that for a little while, and now being here as town manager, so it's a uh, it's. Uh, a great thing to be doing. I, I enjoy it immensely and um, just happy to be uh, given the opportunity to do it. Well, I kind of feel like I've watched you grow up you and probably transition have, from yeah. one thing to another right. because I can remember when we were at the high school and you were at the high school yeah. and I, I knew you from then. Okay? Sure. Yep. So it's been, it's been really interesting for me yeah. to watch the different positions you've gone into and the experience that you're gaining sure. that brings you right here. Yeah, and, and, and I never would have dreamed that I'd end up town manager uh, here, but um, it, like I said, it's it's a great fit. Mm -hmm. I love the job, mm -hmm. love getting around in the community and seeing what's going on and seeing how we can help from mm -hmm. a, um, you know, a local government perspective. And I don't think that can hurt at all to be out there and see what's really happening. Oh yeah. And the fact that you're you know close with the community really helps us out a lot in the long run too. Well I think I think <clears throat> you really have to have a connection to the community. You I really agree. have to feel the the heartbeat of what's going mm -hmm. on here to get a sense yeah. of what the the folks that live here want to see in the mm -hmm. future for the town mm -hmm. and um, what services they'd like to see improved and you know, whether I'm in the, the supermarket or at the gym, there's always somebody, somebody coming up yeah. saying, you know, hey, mm -hmm. what's going on with this? Or could we do this better? And, and I love hearing that yeah. feedback yeah. Um, because unless you have that kind of feedback, you don't know what it is mm -hmm. that people really want out of the town that they live in. I totally agree. Um, back in the 80s when I was on the school board, I got so that if I was in a hurry, I had to go shopping out of town yeah, because right, you had to right. allow that so certain true. length of time to get through the supermarket. It's so true. So since since I've started in this position, if I go to the the grocery store, you know, my wife will say to me, "Why did it take you two hours to go grocery shopping?" And I said, "Well, because usually you run into mm -hmm. you know half a dozen people Absolutely. while you're in there." And yeah end up chatting about different things. Mm -hmm. so. My daughter used to complain that I could hold a uh, meeting in a parking lot yeah. anywhere. <laughs> so, and my, I'll give you my number one hint. Yeah. Don't put anything frozen 
in and your <laughs> cart until, <laughs> until you're until ready to head end. for the aisle yeah. to check out. Sure. Um, so, Kevin, what would you like to update us on first here? Well, I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different activity going on in town. If you'd like, we can start on the economic development I side. I think that's yeah a good place to start. Um, you know, when I when I came into this position, one of the things the council had talked to me about was um, really uh, moving economic development along mm -hmm. in this town. Yeah. And you know, economic development can be a, a scary word for some and an mm -hmm. exciting word mm -hmm. uh, for others. And I think for you it's exciting. I've seen you talk on this su yeah. subject before. I, I, I do get yeah. excited about it because to me when I hear about economic development, I hear about adding vitality to the town in mm -hmm. terms of a, a, a sense of its culture and its community, um, but also from a, a, a tax uh, base as well. Certainly having more commercial development in town mm -hmm. hel helps with the overall tax base so that the whole tax burden isn't put on the shoulders of the residents exactly. uh, who live in town. At the same time, you have to make sure that you're growing appropriately and that the economic development is being done in places where you want to see it be done. Right. Um, and uh, we've done a nice job as a town of developing a master plan mm -hmm. to prepare for the future. If you remember all the growth that occurred in, through the 80s and 90s, oh, I, do. Um, I, I don't think Londonderry was really prepared at that time for what was happening. Mm -hmm. And so at, eventually at one point in the later 90s as a town, we said, we've, we've got to just put a halt to this to get our act together yeah. to determine what it is we really want to see in the town going forward in the years to come and not just kind of flying by the seat of our pants. And now we've done that. Um, we have a wonderful master plan which uh, anyone is welcome to look at if they want to come into town hall and look at the actual books that mm -hmm. were made. Uh, they're welcome to do that or uh, they can go online and, and download it on there mm -hmm. as well and see what the uh, different plans are for economic development in the future and to look at um, you know, how the town has designated certain areas through its zoning to have more economic development, you know, mostly along where people would expect the 102 corridor mm -hmm. between Hudson and, and Derry, and then also along uh, 28 from exit 5 up to the airport area. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, we have a lot of open space and conservation land as well, which we is um, just as important mm -hmm. and just as vital to this community. People love the apple orchards here. Um, not just from a tourism perspective, right. but it's part of who we are. It's mm -hmm. part of our heritage. Yeah. It's tar part of our, our entire um, history mm -hmm. as a town. Yeah. And we want to preserve that into and, the future. And our trailways. The trailway has system. Has been so yeah. important to people. Oh, it has. Yeah. yeah. Both in the, in the um, conservation areas, mm -hmm. but also now with the new rail trail. Yes. That's gotten yeah. off the ground. And uh, we've completed the first mile there and mm -hmm. hopefully next year we'll be able to complete another mile of that and now that the nice weather's coming you see a lot it of people. Is. You're sure. Hopefully. <laughs> God, I know I say that. I would knock on wood somewhere have, if there yeah. was some around. <laughs> hopefully the nice weather's coming. Um, you know, people are starting to utilize that that walking trail. It's a they great, are, yeah. great trail. If, yeah. if you haven't had the chance to get out there yet, mm -hmm. you know, people should check that out. Um, so, you've got all these different pieces that help make a community, help make part of a town, but going back to the, uh, the economic development part, um, certainly most people are familiar with the Woodmont Orchards um, development. And a week doesn't go by when I'm not asked by somebody, what's going on with Woodmont? I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it was a three-year process mm -hmm. just to get their master plan approved. Right. Um, really the first kind of development of its type in New England. It's uh, on the 600 acres of Woodmont mm -hmm. Orchards, 20-year uh, build out, $1 billion development. Um, and it really is going to change the kind of the face of the town, especially in that particular area. Right. You know, you're talking about 1,300 uh, dwellings there. A, a downtown feel with mm -hmm, shops, restaurants, mm -hmm. and, and uh, other commercial uh, areas. So it's, it's really going to be quite a development. And it's been approved. The entire master plan was approved um, back in September. So it's shovel ready, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, they do need to come before the planning board before they go forward and start building each site. Yeah. Um, but the master plan itself has been approved. So now the question is, well, why haven't we seen anything yet? Mm -hmm. um, and as it was reported on recently in the newspaper, yeah. um, there's a, a dispute mm -hmm. uh, with the Demoulis family. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that, uh, unfortunately, it's gone to litigation uh, now mm -hmm. between those two parties. Um, our hope is they'll be able to work out their differences in a timely manner. 
Um, part of the conditional approval that was given when the new market basket was built is that they would mitigate that intersection there um, on the drive going up to market basket. Okay. Anyone in town that's driven that knows it's one of the worst intersections uh, in town. Oh yeah. And so it made sense that as part of their condition of approval for mm -hmm. the new place, they would have to mitigate that intersection. They still have to do that. Okay. The plan, of course, was when Woodmont was going to go forward to start building out, they would improve it at that time. Mm -hmm. And that still is their plan. Uh, that being said, we're obviously keeping a close eye on where this is going because uh, whether Woodmont starts tomorrow or starts five years from now, they, they've got to improve that intersection there right. um, because, that, again, that was part of what the town told mm -hmm. them you've got to do. So, um, so we're hopeful, as I said, that they are able to mm -hmm. resolve their, dis their dispute soon. Now, where, what, ex what intersection are you referring so to? So that intersection is uh, if you're coming off of 102 and you're mm -hmm. making a left to go up Garden Drive uh, into Market Basket, mm -hmm. Um, it's the intersection that if you're coming out of the Londonderry Commons shopping area or coming from uh, the auto store, the, I think it's O'Reilly's now is the name, I'm it was sure, VIP yeah. at one time, yeah. um, the park and ride mm -hmm. area. It's yeah. that four-way intersection mm -hmm. there. It's tricky. It is tricky. <laughs> it is tricky because it's also, it only has three stop signs, mm -hmm. anyone who's coming from 102. And the reason there isn't a stop sign for people coming from 102 is because it, we don't want it to queue all the way onto back it, yeah. onto yeah. 102. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not a great intersection there, mm -hmm. again, for anyone that's that's driven it. Um, so, you know, we, as I said, we're watching it closely and we're hoping things uh, commence with the Woodmont development mm -hmm. uh, shortly so that they can start mitigating that traffic there. Um, but that's only one aspect of the economic development. Obviously, it's a huge project. Right. Um, but then we've got a lot of good stuff happening, both uh, at the Exit 5 uh, interchange as well, especially as they continue to widen I-93 mm -hmm. in that particular yeah. area. Um, and then we have, uh, of course, the airport area as well. There's uh, some great land for development that's still untouched mm -hmm. up there. Yes. And as a lot of folks know, most of the developable land in around the airport is in Londonderry. It's not on the Manchester side, it's yeah. on the Londonderry yeah. side. You know, 80% of the airport mm -hmm. is in Londonderry. Uh, and and that still doesn't make sense to people. Why is it the Manchester airport when most of it's in Londonderry? Right, yeah. <clears throat> and my understanding is, is that years, years, and years ago when it was- When you were just a little tyke. I, I don't even think I was a tyke. You weren't I don't, even I a don't even think head. I was thought of at this point. <laughs> um, you know, the, at the time, Londonderry had the opportunity to essentially take the airport over. We didn't have anywhere near the resources in no, place at the time not, to be yeah. running an airport. Yeah. Manchester did. And so that's why today it's Manchester Airport located in Londonderry, mm -hmm. New Hampshire. Um, but nonetheless, we, we do have all this valuable land around mm -hmm. there. And most notably is probably the Pettengill Road uh, area. It's certainly talked about a lot. It's talked about a lot. In fact, uh, just this week, um, U.S. Senator Kelly Ayotte mm -hmm. uh, was over there taking a tour of the, um, you know, the land possibilities mm -hmm. there along with uh, Senator Carson here in town. Um, and what they were meeting about is the, the big you know, $25,000, maybe I should say $5 million question is how do we get the road built? Yeah. Uh, because the curb cut intersection is there. So mm -hmm. when people are coming off of the airport access road, Ray Resort Drive, uh, or coming up from Route 3A, you can see the curb cut for Pettengill Road. Mm -hmm where it would uh, begin. Um, that was done at the time of when they uh, expanded the airport access road. The town pursued um, federal stimulus monies at the time to try to get it built. The town has pursued various grants as well, uh, and none of it's come to fruition. That being said, there's been economic studies done on that entire area, mm -hmm. um, which show that uh, at its full build out, that area could easily produce 10,000 jobs, um, could mean millions of dollars in um, uh, tax revenue for both the state and the, the town as well, mm -hmm. um, and really could be a huge economic engine, um, not only for Londonderry, but for the state of New Hampshire. In fact, Business New Hampshire magazine, not all that long ago, ran a whole story on it and asked the question, was on the front page of their magazine, is Londonderry the next piece? Um, because a lot of people have looked at this land and said, that's going to be the next Pease development, mm -hmm. uh, Pease trade mm -hmm. port. Right. Um, if anyone's been out to Pease and seen what's happened out there since they shut the air, air base down, uh, it's, it's quite impressive. Mm -hmm. A lot of developments occurred out there. 
Uh, and there's no reason why that couldn't happen right up around the airport. But we don't have to shut the airport down to do it. No, we do not. Okay. <laughs> no, the airport is a vital economic okay. engine. To, yeah, without the airport up there, that land Wouldn't, isn't yeah. anywhere near as available yeah, uh, yeah, as, as yeah. it would be. Um, so the good news is, is even without the road, we're already starting to see activity mm -hmm. in that particular area. Um, you have Federal Express, which has been conditionally approved to build a 300,000 square foot facility um, up uh, right at the beginning entrance of Pentonville mm -hmm. Road in Industrial Drive. Yeah. Um, for now, they're going to utilize existing roadways around the airport, but they would love to at some point hopefully utilize uh, Pentonville. Mm -hmm. um, but they're conditionally approved. Uh, Milton Caterpillar has also been in before the planning board, uh, and they're currently in their uh, design review stage, but they're looking to uh, build about a 100,000 square foot facility Again, up in that same area, more behind where Kluber Lubrication is up there, German-owned company. Okay. Um, but they're looking to build up there as well, and we've got a lot of other interest mm -hmm. in that area. But again, most commonly we hear is, when's the road going to be built? How soon do we get the road built? Because mm -hmm. for a developer, for them to build the entire road themselves, yeah. it's just cost prohibitive. Yeah. They they can't do it for the same reasons mm -hmm. we haven't done it yeah. either, which is, you know, how, how do you get this done so that it has no impact on the taxpayers? Mm -hmm. For the developers, they're looking at and saying, how do we, if we were to build a road, how do we do it mm -hmm. and get a return on our investment? Right. Right. Um, so we're both grappling with the same thing, but everyone seems to agree that once that is built, it's going to fall like dominoes. You know, a lot of development is going to come in there because you just need a way to access right. that land. So I, I'm really optimistic, Dottie, that in the next five years, um, we will one way or another see that road finally be built and you'll see a lot of new development going in there, which again is great for Londonderry mm -hmm. because it provides tax revenue to offset what the residents right. are, are paying in their property taxes. Mm -hmm. Um, much like our power plant in town here. Yes. Um, yeah. The power plant is valued at about $430 million. Mm -hmm. um, and the funny thing is, is we, we, because we've been in London Dairy a long time, we remember the whole, <laughs> I don't want to say battle, but a lot of, you know, there was a, yeah. it, it didn't come easy when the power no, plant was, was coming a, in. There was no. a lot of information out mm -hmm. there on both sides. Yeah. And, um, and, and now, you know, for, for people that are just moving into town, mm -hmm. they may not even know we have a power plant in town Very because true. it's yeah. so tucked away yeah. uh, up uh, mm -hmm. towards the airport area. Um, but that, that power plant provides the, the town of London area about $8 million of revenue um, every year, tax that revenue. Wow. That's a lot. It is. Um, and that helps keep our residential mm -hmm. uh, taxes low in town. Um, so. Really exciting stuff, I think, on the economic development side. Uh, in fact, um, a couple of weeks ago, we actually had a meeting with the governor to inform her of what was going on in Londonderry. Okay. Um, so that certainly if there's areas where we'd like the state's mm -hmm. help, she's aware of what's happening right. and, and we can get her office involved. And, and she pledged to us to help us in any way they possibly could. Would love to get money from them. I don't think yeah. that's going to happen. <laughs> um, but certainly, there's other things that they mm -hmm. can do to help yeah. us, yeah. whether it's with the permitting process or, mm -hmm. or, or other things. Um, but she was obviously very excited about it because you have potentially two of the largest developments in the state, if not northern New England, happening At right here airport. in Londonderry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's exciting. It is uh, on yeah. the economic development side. Yeah. And that's not going to squeak into people's residential areas, which is, I think, right. mainly what people are concerned about. They want to see the growth, but they don't want to be directly impacted. They don't want it in their backyard. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's, uh, and, it, and it's important that we're mindful of that. Mm -hmm. Again, Absolutely. when we're looking at our zoning and we're looking mm -hmm. at how do we grow, you know, what I love about London Dairy is you can go from the airport area, which is very industrial, mm -hmm. a lot of activity going on up there, drive all the way down to Route 102 where mm -hmm. all of our commercial stuff is and in between that you pass all of these beautiful orchards, mm -hmm. the old homes, mm -hmm. especially along Old Mammoth yeah. Road. That's the beauty of London Dairy. Yeah. Is I, I think we're showing how you can do it right here. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't have to be one or the other. You don't have to be a city or a yeah. completely rural yeah. town with no economic uh, base at all. You can have both, mm -hmm. but you can do it right. You can do it appropriately um, and still have a wonderful quality of life. Yeah. It's why people move to this town. It's why people stay in here, stay in town, 
um, you know, their entire lives is because it's such a wonderful community. And speaking of which, that's another thing too that the master plan looked at that as a, that the planning staff in town is looking at too, is how do we develop uh, a kind of a continuum of um, uh, living in mm -hmm, town mm -hmm. so that you don't have to say stay in a or you don't have to move into town looking for a single family home right off the bat because a lot of young folks can't afford that right. and for older folks they don't have to stay in a single family mm -hmm. home their entire lives too mm -hmm. so we've had a, a skilled care nursing facility that has an interest in moving to town uh, more in the north end mm -hmm. uh, uh, across from or on uh, Grenier Field Road and where mm -hmm. Old Mammoth intersect. Yeah. Um, they've been before the planning board with their conceptual design. Uh, we've had interest from an assisted living facility as well. And of course, there's been work her, wor workforce housing approved right. in a couple of other areas mm -hmm. in town. And the whole idea is, that, is to say, okay, uh, you know, if you've got young people that are maybe just out of college uh, and they with tremendous debt with tremendous debt yeah you know they they in the past couldn't afford to move to Londonderry mm -hmm. um, because they have that debt um, they maybe you know their job perhaps is in Boston and mm -hmm. so they want to live closer to Boston even though Londonderry is a, a great commuter location yeah. um, where the housing's a lot cheaper but they maybe couldn't afford a single family home right mm -hmm. off the bat. So now they'll have the option of workforce housing yeah. that they could move into, and then they could upgrade from that into a single family mm -hmm. home after. And then uh, there's elderly housing mm -hmm. options uh, in town. And then as they get older, maybe move into an assisted mm -hmm. living. They can do this all you yeah. know, in Londonderry. Yeah. That's, the, that's the idea behind the master plan in that particular area is to have this entire conti uh, continuum mm -hmm. uh, of care right here in town. And of course, we've got great medical options as oh, well sure. with the yeah. Elliott uh, mm -hmm. facility mm -hmm. there, and, and Parkland has offices as well. Yeah. So um, you know, it's I, I I really commend the folks that put a lot of work into developing um, this master plan mm -hmm. for Londonderry. It uh, sounds like it's going to be one of the most comprehensive ones that we've had. Well, I think so. And the other thing about it too is we also have a master plan implementation committee mm -hmm. which i think is key because we didn't have that before we, we haven't no. and you know a lot of people say boy we spend a lot of money putting a master plan together for what, what? happened yeah you know um we spend all this time doing it but mm -hmm. then but then what it kind of yeah. just sits on a shelf collects mm -hmm. dust and you never see anything happen from it from there um, now we have this committee in place mm -hmm. that is looking at what the master plan has come up with as a conceptual and saying, mm -hmm. okay, how do we make some of the things, we're not gonna be able to do all of it, but how do we make some of the things that, that it's outlined become a reality? Yes. What are the yeah. things we have to do to make yeah. it become a reality? So it's not a wish list, it's a to-do list. It's a to-do list, yeah. yeah. And it still has to go through planning board mm -hmm. approval, sure. and in some cases, uh, if it's a zoning change, go through uh, town council approval as well. But it, we at least have a committee looking at mm -hmm. um, these various aspects. The town common, that's always been a big topic of discussion, certainly since I've been here. Um, you know, what to do with the town common? Yep. Do we keep it as it is, mm -hmm. or do we try to bring some vibrancy to it? Mm -hmm. Do we change the the town forest into something else, um, which is you know the the trees behind yeah. where the stage Those currently walls, is? Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things that the master plan looked at. Mm -hmm. um, the master plan came up with a, a kind of a very progressive design of what to do there mm -hmm. to bring some more vibrancy and, and activity yeah. to that area. Um, but these are things that, again, the, the implementation committee mm -hmm. are looking at, that the planning board's gonna look at, so that um, so these questions don't just mm -hmm. sit on a shelf for the next 10 years. and come up at the next master plan meeting. I think that's great. Um, with the um, town common, I think one of the biggest issues that uh, we've had here in London Dairy for a very long time is we don't have a town center. Right. And other communities around us have that. They can build activities based on that. You get more socialization with the people down the street sure. when you do that. And I think it ma makes the community feel closer. Oh, I do too. More closely knit. Right. So I, I think that's a, a good one to um, have on the table to be worked on. Right. And I have also heard a lot of people talking about how it, there might be somewhat of a shift to the Woodmont project. Right. That that area in, in the center would be a town center. 
yeah, the it, secondary to right. what those of us who've been here forever would think, would think of it. but some right. of those activities could also happen yeah, there. Absolutely, and I, and I think you could see almost two, they would serve two very different functions, oh, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. You could see two very different town centers in that. I think the town center plan for Woodmont mm -hmm. is more um, almost Portsmouth-like, yes, if I can use I that agree. as an no, example. No, I, I think I know what Downtown you're talking Downtown walking, the yep. shops, the right. restaurants, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. which, which I think will be great for Londonderry yeah. to have that. Yeah. Whereas a town common, the mm -hmm. town center, the, the one that currently exists, um, is almost more um, civic mm -hmm. uh, Great community. place for the concerts. That Great place thing. for the outdoor yeah. concerts. Old home day. Old home day uh, activities. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you have your historic buildings there. Your schools are all in that area right. as yeah. well. So it, it serves a, um, a very useful purpose, mm -hmm. a very different purpose than I think what Woodmont um, will end up serving right. uh, once they start to build out their um, town center. Mm -hmm. uh, and that'll be, again, that, that'll be another thing that I think will be unique to Londonderry is that it will have that kind of dual yeah. um, community gathering mm -hmm. areas um, when that happens. We could maybe say if you've been in town over 20 years, you can go to this <laughs> one. Under 20 years, you need to go to the other one. No, right, kidding. yeah, yeah. No, but you're right. It would serve very different needs, and both of them would be very viable. Yeah. Um, so what else is going on around town? What else is going on around town? Or around um, town well, hall. you know, we, we, um, I'll talk a little bit about the, the budget. Um, oh, yeah. And... Um, uh, healthcare related uh, issues as mm -hmm. well. So uh, in February, um, you know, I got my reports on how we were doing and this obviously was a very difficult winter. Oh yeah. Um, especially with snow removal. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it wasn't uh, even just, we had a lot of nuanced snow and ice as well because it was so darn cold. Mm -hmm. And so even when it wasn't snowing a lot, we'd have to send the trucks out to do sanding um, and to, to clean up certain areas. So, um, you know, our snow budget was hit hard mm -hmm. this year. In fact, we were over our snow, you know, what we budget for our snow removal. Last year, I think we were 60% of budget. Uh, this year, we were probably about 120, 130% wow. of budget. So, uh, you know, we had those issues mm -hmm. going on. Um, our legal costs were up as well. Um, and then we've been uh, over in our fire overtime uh, costs and mm -hmm. we've put some plans in place and mechanisms both on a funding end and management end to address that in the next budget mm -hmm. but we still have to deal with this what, year's this budget. Year, yeah. So when looking at the books at the end of February um, we're running about six to six percent higher than where we should have been running for that time mm -hmm. and we were about ten percent higher than where we were running in um, fiscal year 13. So I had decided at that point that we'd implement a spending freeze mm -hmm. and that was a freeze on all um, non-essential uh, spending that right, goes on in right. town hall. Mm -hmm. Any of the essential stuff would continue to fund that, but mm -hmm. the non-essential stuff we're putting a freeze on it. Uh, and so, and, and did this as a way to try to bring uh, things back in line uh, so that the spending should be uh, where it should be. Mm -hmm. Our revenues were running about where they should be running, but even if our even if our revenues were running over, you still can't spend more than what budget, the budget right. allows yeah. for. Yeah, uh, so and I think people don't understand that you have to plan so far ahead to develop a budget that's going to be voted on and isn't still going to be implemented for so many more absolutely. months. Absolutely. It's a very long process. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we start our budget planning uh, really sometime in September. Um, we do our first budget presentation mm -hmm. in November to the town council and the budget committee. It doesn't get voted on until March, and then it doesn't get implemented until that July. Right. So it is. It's a very, very long process. You do have to plan ahead for mm -hmm. it. Um, so and that sometimes you're looking at a crystal ball. With nature, you are. With nature, you have no idea what Mother Nature is going to do. You to don't. You. You really yeah. don't. And so, you know, you use historical mm -hmm. trends as well to try to figure out where you need to be. Um, but sometimes it is a, you know, a, a guessing game. So <clears throat> what we've, um, so we put the spending freeze in place at the end of February. Mm -hmm. um, we looked at where we were at the end of March. And the good news is, is um, the spending freeze has been working. The gap has closed from about 6% over to about 2% over. And, um, and just going back to the revenue part for a moment, yeah, there's some people who think that, well, is if your revenues are coming in over, you mm -hmm. can spend up to the revenues. But again, they're two completely separate 
functions of our right. the way we keep our books. Mm -hmm. um, so you're spending line. The way we have to keep our books. Absolutely, yeah, the, by state law. Right. You know, so we're not allowed to overexpend that yep. spending line, mm -hmm. irregardless of where revenues come right. in. Um, and so I'm hopeful that uh, at the end of April, we'll be back where we need to be now mm -hmm. that um, we're not plowing any more snow. And we hopefully hope. won't be for the rest <laughs> of the season. Um, our legal bills have gone down now that the, um, the impact fee litigation is just about over. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, and, and the chief uh, in the fire department, Chief Darren O'Brien, has made some good strides in, mm -hmm. in curbing the overtime uh, overages as well. So with those things, I think we'll be back in line mm -hmm. by April. And, um, you know, I'd love to be able to lift the freeze mm -hmm. uh, after that. If, if we can't, we can't. Um, but I felt it was, it was prudent to do the freeze now to bring things back in place so mm -hmm. that at the end of the year we didn't have to go in and, and say, geez, I hope we can meet our budget lines mm -hmm. by the yeah. end of June. You have to really scramble right. that last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and um, so hopefully you know, we mm -hmm. put ourselves in a good position going into the, the final two months of the fiscal year uh, with, with May and June. Um, but one of the, the big ticket items um, in our budget area is the rising cost of health care. Yes. Um, Healthcare costs are not going down. Mm -hmm. They continue to go up. And uh, so back when we began the budget process uh, last year, one of the things the town council asked me to look into is one of the first things they asked me to look into when I came on was can we deliver the same quality of health care to our employees but do it at a lower cost? Mm -hmm. And let's look at all of our options. Um, currently, we've been with what was LGC. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now, now called Trust. Health Trust. Yeah. Um, but you know, we wanted to look at self-insuring. Mm -hmm. We wanted to look at we don't we don't have a lot of health care carrier options in this state. No, we don't. Uh, there's only a couple. Mm -hmm. um, but we want. Well, to I look, know one. What's the second well, one? Well, there's Anthem, Anthem, and then there's. Yeah. And um, Anthem is a Blue Choice, Blue Cross. Right, and that's company. the one we're currently yep. on through mm -hmm. Health Trust. The uh, school actually mm -hmm. uses. Um, so we use Health Trust. The school uses another organization called School Care. Okay. And they get their, I believe they get their health care through Aetna. Mm -hmm. um, though, you know, don't send me bad letters well, I if think, I got uh, that yeah, wrong. Yeah. But I think that's who their mm -hmm. health care carrier is mm -hmm. through school choice. Um, but those are really the only two options that you have. But we also want to look at would it be cheaper to purchase it directly through the insurance carrier mm -hmm. rather than going through this conglomerate known as Health Trust. Right. All these different things. So, um, I started doing a lot of research into this, mm -hmm. and uh, along the way in doing this, came across a, a healthcare consultant, uh, Tom DeLacy, who's with a, an organization called Workplace Benefit Solutions, who other municipalities have used, and he's got a very good track record mm -hmm. with being able to save municipalities money um, through um, bargaining, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not bargaining, but using a, a competitive form of saying, hey, this uh, we're yeah. being offered this yeah. from this company what can you what do can us? you do yeah. for us uh, including uh, health trust mm -hmm. as well um, and so we uh, went into an agreement with him and part of that agreement was you don't get paid unless we see x amount of dollars in savings that sounds like a pretty good agreement in our, makes sense us. to yeah. me absolutely i like you know? that makes um, them work a little harder yeah sure mm -hmm. it does and and it also it it makes sure it holds the town harmless that mm -hmm. we're not going to be paying out someone and still not see any savings on our health care side um, and so the good news is is that over the last uh six months mm -hmm. and looking at all of the different various options um, originally we were quoted from uh, health trust that our um, maximum rate was going to go up 9.9% on health care costs. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a big rate increase. Um, we were just informed a couple of weeks ago that uh, the final rate that they've come in, if we choose to use them as the option uh, going forward into uh, the next fiscal year, is 3.2%. How interesting. How interesting, yeah. So it's a major decline. Mm -hmm. And we obviously feel that a, a large reason for that is because we were shopping. And exactly. they knew we were shopping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in fact, Peter Bragdon, who's the uh, chairman now, mm -hmm. uh, or the executive director of Health Trust, reached out a number of times and said, we want to keep London Dairy. We hope you stay on. And I said, well, Peter, would love to stay on. Give mm -hmm. us a price that yeah. will we allow us to yeah. do that, that we can live with. So what does that mean, Donnie? Oh, that means it's about a savings of $205,000 in, mm -hmm. in next year's budget. Right That's off good. the bat. That's good. That's a great thing. 
So, um, so it, it worked. Shopping, mm -hmm. getting competitive in this field um, worked for us uh, this time around. And, and we're looking into the future of other things we can do to try to control these costs because mm -hmm. uh, I think it's in 2017 or 18 is when this uh, quote unquote Cadillac healthcare tax as part of the uh, Obamacare program right. kicks in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's gonna hit both the employer and the employee mm -hmm. uh, if we end up having to pay that tax. Yeah. So one of the things we're looking at is uh, how do we uh, avoid paying that? What can mm -hmm. we do so that we don't have that liability right. hanging over us um, when the time comes around for mm -hmm. that? So it's a, it's a, a moving target. Um, it's always changing as well, but we're keeping a, you know, we're trying to do right by the taxpayer mm -hmm. here and, and I, trying to I'm control trying these to costs. I'm trying to think over the years, and I don't believe that the health costs have ever gone down. I can't recall the time when they did. Yeah. It's just been... I'm, I mean, I don't, I, I'm trying, I've seen the history of the health care increase mm -hmm. of the town. I don't recall seeing it ever go down either. There have been a couple of years when the, the increase has been very insignificant. Yes, Other years where it's gone up over 10%. Yeah. But as far as ever mm -hmm. seeing a decrease, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I've, I've seen that. Um, I don't think so. You know, there, there's another question I wanted to ask you about sure. budgeting. This is something that um, I've talked with other people about and they have the question, is basically we're not truly a zero-based budgeting process because right. we know how much it costs us to operate minimally. And then from there, put in the things that will improve our, our work. Right. Um, that being, look back at the, at the years before, see what's been spent, see yep. how we spent it. And it seems that, and I might be wrong on this one, yeah. but it seems to me that every year there are overtime costs for the fire department that weren't covered in the budget. Right. And they have to be covered before the end of the year and the freeze goes on and it's like, all the departments are sort of giving a little to get that through. Right. Um, why can't we look at the historical picture and yep. say, okay, we're either going to have to, I don't know how this is going to work, we're going to have people there so we don't have to pay overtime so we don't have that every year, yeah. or just budget for it? Yeah, it's a great question, um, and it's uh, one that I've made it a priority to mm -hmm. finally figure out how we can fix this problem. Okay. Because it, it's... Not be reactive, but maybe be proactive? Well, I, I, and, and we, we've looked at this quite a bit in this last budget mm -hmm. season. If anyone, you know, watched the, the different town council meetings... It was talked and about a lot. It was talked about a lot. And we went through what I, what I like to call an overtime audit mm -hmm. of the fire department to see, okay, where, where was all the different areas of overtime being earned? Right through the department and what are some of the new management controls that we could put in place mm -hmm. to help curb um, some of those things. And uh, to Chief O'Brien's credit, he has uh, done that mm -hmm. uh, in a number of different areas. Um, to the town council's credit, they've also allocated more f funding for mm -hmm. overtime. I think it ended up being about $105,000 extra in the fiscal year 15 budget. Okay. Um, I think between the administrative changes mm -hmm. that the chief is uh, putting in place mm -hmm. and implementing and through management practice and also through the additional funding, mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to make a guarantee, Dottie. But well, no, because I, this is transparency <laughs> in absolutely. government, so we're going to see if you do. That's right. Um, <laughs> but I am, uh, I am almost 90%, barring a catastrophe, 90% mm -hmm. certain that we're, we are not going to have an overtime for the first time and you know who knows how long we're not going to have an, <laughs> yeah. uh, an, an overrun mm -hmm. in our overtime budget for fire next That's, year. That would be great to and, see. And I'll tell you, the the chief is very much committed to that. And mm -hmm. and he, we've had a lot of candid and frank conversations. And what he's said to, I mean, he's a lifetime Londonderry resident. I was just going to say, he's, he's a local boy. He, he knows. is. Yeah. And and so this is very personal mm -hmm. to him. And what he said to me is, Kevin. I don't want to see the other departments having to cover us year after year. He said, I, I'm, I'm done with that, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not yeah. fair to those departments. Um, that and, are and on not budget. That they don't, and, yeah. and I got to tell you, they don't complain to me about it. Mm -hmm. They don't come to me and say, you know, Kevin, why, why are we always, you mm -hmm. know, bailing out the fire department on this particular area? Um, it, because they're professionals. They're, they're professionals at what they do. That being said, um, 
this it shouldn't be a impact. it shouldn't be a shell game either. It right. shouldn't there shouldn't be a just an automatic mindset that mm -hmm. well we know police or DPW is going to come in under so therefore we can have these overages. Mm -hmm. and it shouldn't work that no. way. And there should be you know truth and budgeting. Mm -hmm. And and I think we've made as I said great strides mm -hmm. both through administrative changes and through um, additional funding that are going to get the, us to right where we need to be um, next budget season so that. Uh, there is for the first time, uh, you know, who, there may even be money given back from the fire department mm -hmm. um, at the end of uh, next year's budget. Well, he said May. That's right. As may. I said, no, <laughs> I've, I've learned a long time ago never <laughs> to guarantee anything um, because, again, you never know. You know, one of the issues right now that Darren's been having to deal with is we've just had, through circumstance, a lot of folks out on uh, extended sick leave, right. um, which is not something he had last year, mm -hmm. but it's something and he's had really this year. And not really something you can plan. It's not, it's not something you can plan mm -hmm. for at all. So, um, you know, he's, he's been having to deal with that mm -hmm. and that's, um, you know, that's made a dent in, into his overtime budget um, with having to, to cover there. Um, but again, that's, you know, you, you look historically and say, okay, historically we don't usually have this many people out at oh, this yeah, one time. Yeah. It's kind of an anomaly to mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. So, um, but uh, you know, again, I, I can't say enough good things about Chief O'Brien and the job that he's done since he became chief mm -hmm. almost around the same time that I came in as, as town yes, manager. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I, think, uh, I think folks are gonna be uh, pleasantly surprised when they see the budget next year and, mm -hmm. and how well it's managed uh, on the fire side. Sounds good, yeah. looking forward to that. Well, and the other thing too is that um, you know, and, and just stay on this area of the budget here is, mm -hmm. you know, with us being an SB2 town, so that is having a deliberative session, you know, we don't have the town hall meeting anymore, right. which... I miss that. You know, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of folks that do miss it. Yeah. And, I, you know, you can say there's good and bad to mm -hmm. it. Um, the good is that you have a, a system now where people go in and vote by ballot. And the whole idea behind that was is that people, people didn't involved. have to come to town hall for, mm -hmm. you know, take eight hours on their Saturday to do, it would encourage more people. Yeah. That being said, when you have a town that has anywhere between you know, 15 and 20,000 voters, mm -hmm. I think it's probably close to 15,000, um, and you only have 2,000 people voting, even and on And then ballot, you only have a couple dozen at the meeting. Oh, less than 100. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you say, well, you know, mm -hmm. how, how many, how, how much more has mm -hmm. it encouraged people yeah. to get involved? Yeah. Yeah, I do think I do think that the the uh, the reason for doing it was good. Right, I but, agree. But I don't think it's working the way people thought it would, and I think it's really important to have that face to face that we used to have in the town meetings. Yeah. You stand up, you say what you think. We're not going to have any problem with you doing that. Right. And it may or may not change the decision when you put put right. it to a vote at yeah. the meeting. No, it's so. and that's that's very true and. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you that I think the motives behind doing it mm -hmm. were, were good motives to try to get more people involved, yeah. but it also has that face-to-face -face, mm -hmm. um, has gone away by We've not having that, the, yeah. the yeah. town meeting. Um, mm -hmm. But what I, one of the things I was going to say by doing it the way we do it now through the ballot process mm -hmm. is it has set up this whole idea of having a default budget oh, yeah. uh, every year, which of mm -hmm. course, you know, the default budget is taking the previous year's budget and then any contractual obligations uh, get added to whatever, it. Yeah. And that sort of becomes your new, you know, baseline mm -hmm. um, from, from, where, from where you start out. Yeah. Now, the last two years, I believe, I know definitely in this last budget season, but I think in the one before it too, um, we've had budgets, op uh, proposed operating budgets below um, the default. default. Yeah, the school um, board's been doing that for years too. Right. Comes in just below. Yeah. Um, and that is, again, because, you, you know, you, you get your default budget, but then mm -hmm. you look and you say, okay, but where are areas where we don't need mm -hmm. to have, you know, even e just because it's in the default doesn't mean you necessarily need, need that it. money yeah, yeah. for the next budget season. Yeah. Um, and those are the kind of things that, mm -hmm. that we look at. Um, <clears throat> so, and, and going into the next budget season, we'll be looking at where can we find efficiencies mm -hmm. uh, in government, looking at the historical data to see what lines do we always budget for every year? Because we don't always want to do, do business as usual. Mm -hmm. You know, we, oh, yeah, we no. really want to look at what lines do we historically fund that 
aren't getting spent, mm -hmm. yet we keep funding them because mm -hmm. it's just the way we've always done it. Yeah. Um, or because, well, that's part of the default. Mm -hmm. So we really want to look at those things yeah. and say, okay, maybe we don't need to put as much money in these particular mm -hmm. lines because historically they're, they're not being spent. But then also look at where are the lines that are historically over that, um, you know, I, we just had a, this discussion the other night about the library. Right. Where they're, they're purchasing of books line historically is, you know, is over, but mm -hmm. they have other lines that are under. Right. M you know, making sure that we're appropriately funding the mm -hmm. lines where they yeah. need to be, yeah. whether they are over or under. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's really, you know, scrutinizing, taking a hard look at all of that. And also, as I said, f finding where we can make efficiencies mm -hmm. in town. You know, I have an open door uh, for anyone that yep. wants to come up and, and, and visit me. Usually there's a line, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it is open. And, and Do I have to take a ticket? No, there's no deli <laughs> ticket. Um, but I want to hear from people to mm -hmm. know how can we make the services better in town. Mm -hmm. You know, one, one of the things that um, I never never crossed my mind that I'd have to deal with as town manager until it started happening this year was the issue of mailboxes oh, yes. being hit by snow plows. Exactly. Um, it's, uh, it's a terrible inconvenience when it happens to the person. Obviously our plows aren't doing it on purpose. Well, they can't even see the mailboxes in half of the snowstorms. Half of the times they can't yeah. because especially again this winter mm -hmm. was just yeah. you know off the charts. And I think it's hard for people to hear well you know actually your mailbox is not on your land it's on town it's land. On, it's on the public right Back of it way. up and you know right. might not get hit. But people don't really want to hear that. Well That's what and, it's always been. And, and you know most towns have a policy that uh, in fact probably all the towns that the town is not liable for the cost of when, when mm -hmm. a mailbox is hit. Mm -hmm. And to sometimes this surprises folks when they hear that, especially when they call town hall and say, mm -hmm. what are you going to do to fix my mailbox? Mm -hmm. And we have to tell them that <laughs> we're not liable for it. That being said, you know, there are towns that do have a policy that they'll give a, a portion um, of compensation, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, just a post and a cement with yeah, the box, right. um, you know, to, to Mm -hmm. Try to help them out mm -hmm. for that inconvenience of, of mm -hmm. having to do it. That's something you know that's been brought to my attention by a number of people. Might be worth the goodwill. That you know we're going to look at what mm -hmm. what would be the cost of doing that. Yeah. If the cost is very minimal, mm -hmm. um, like you said, it might be a, a goodwill thing on the mm -hmm. town yeah. the town's part to say, yeah, we recognize it's mm -hmm. a terrible inconvenience when your mailbox. In fact, and just so people know, one of our town councilors' mailbox was actually hit. Oh well. Uh, this equal year. opportunity. So it's, yeah, equal, equal oppor opportunity. opportunity. Exactly. <laughs> so Did it had every storm or just one? Just, just the one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> there was I no pattern. I it. wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah. No, there was no pattern. <laughs> um, so you know, it's it's things like that. Um, I've I've heard from folks that you know would like to see if we can you know one night a week mm -hmm. keep the town clerk's office open a little bit longer. So yeah. for people who can't get there by quarter or five, mm -hmm. um, you know that they have time, at least they know there's going to be one night a week where they right. can get there later. I think that's important. That's something we're looking into mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, and, and so these are things I want to hear from people. Mm -hmm. How can we make the services in town um, better for mm -hmm. the people that are living here? Well, we're, we're going to put your contact information, great. telephone number, and your email, Excellent. and all of that at the end of the show so that people can do that. That's great. And we'll also give them an opportunity to send questions in to, to me that can be brought up yep. at, at, because we're going to do this once a month, Excellent. right? Yes, at we least. are. That's yeah. our plan. That's our plan. Um, we only have about 10 minutes left. Yeah. What are the other subjects that you'd like to touch base on here? We've touched base on a lot of subjects we thus far. We have, yeah. Um, we've, we've really covered a lot. You well, know, you've covered a lot. I, well, you know, one of the things I will say is that um, Londonderry, uh, for a long time, probably since its inception, um, really has a lot of London Dairy is run by volunteer organizations mm -hmm. and, and oh, volunteer yeah. groups in town. Um, and it really is, uh, I think, a, a nice partnership between your your local government that's paid for through your taxes, but then your volunteer organizations and your, your private mm -hmm. entities as well. Um, we're always looking for more people who want to get involved. involved on a volunteer basis, mm -hmm. be it through serving on different boards and committees mm -hmm. we have in town. Yeah. It could be the zoning board, could mm -hmm. be the planning board. 
could be the dog park I committee. I was just going to say. I know you wanted me to give a plug <laughs> to the dog park committee. So th there's there's a bunch of different boards. Mm -hmm. um, if you contact my assistant, Kirby Wade, um, she'll uh, help you fill out. There's We have a talent form mm -hmm. uh, online. Sounds like you're signing up for American say, Idol. Or be, on, be here. Yeah. Or be here. Be yeah, here, exactly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so we, we ask people to fill that out. But... Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a way to show interest mm -hmm. in getting involved. Mm -hmm. um, and very, we have and Beautif I, Beautify London Dairy, yes, which is a yeah, great organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, an organization, I, I, the name's escaping me, but they've been helping with the litter pickup around town the last few weekends. Yeah, um, it escapes me too. But they exist. Not that we, we care. Right. We just can't we remember your name Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. In yeah. fact, there's a big banner out by the fire station. There is, and that's what I'm trying to picture. <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, there's, there's. Roads, so the, roadside cleanup. I don't know if that's called the, the committee, but. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot cleanup. of, there's a lot mm -hmm. of groups. There's a historical society, the mm -hmm. Heritage Commission. Uh, if you go online, you can see these various boards mm -hmm. and groups. And yeah. We're always looking for people to, to volunteer mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the work, as I said, that gets done mm -hmm. is done by volunteer members uh, of our community. And we couldn't run as a town mm -hmm. if we didn't have yeah. uh, these volunteers doing mm -hmm. what they do. And I'd just like to add that you said they could go to Kirby and have that fill out that form. Yep. And I have to tell you, I have found her to be incredibly responsive. Oh, that's great to um, hear. She's, she's, uh, from what my perspective, she's doing yeah. a wonderful job oh, because you, you ask her a question, yeah. even if I leave her an email and say, you know, no hurry, uh, by the next day at the latest, I've got it. I've yeah. got the information. Oh, that's she's wonderful. really on top of things, I really, and I appreciate that because well, I want to bother you with all the little details that she can take care of. Well, there's a, there's, so. there's a saying, the, behind every good man is a great woman. <laughs> that's that's true both in personal life and professional, and in your business. too. Oh, because yeah. Kirby, yeah. She, she... I'm a woman, I know that. Yeah, of course you know that. <laughs> Um, she does a great job running yeah. interference yeah. and helping people. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very happy yeah. to hear that. I'm not surprised just because mm -hmm. I know who she is, but I'm, yeah, I'm happy to like hear that. Yeah, I just like people to know that when they make that call, they're yeah. going to meet up with somebody who's going to want to help them. Absolutely. So I think that's important. No, it is. Very important. It is. Um, I have also found, yep. okay, to, to your credit, that the town hall... Um, Seems it's more receptive. Feel more like you're welcome in the building. Oh, great! And not that you ever weren't, but it's yeah. just a feeling. Okay, it's being presented a little bit differently, and I think that's good too. Those well, are sort of the intangibles yeah. that you know you can't put a. No, that's that's great to hear. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, uh, the the folks in the clerk's office they're on the front lines. Mm -hmm. Oh you yeah, know? they are. And yeah. they they probably have mm -hmm. the most interaction yeah. with the residents more mm -hmm. than anyone else. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, you know they're very good at their jobs. They, I think, always handle themselves very professionally. And um, you know, it's you're not always dealing with the happiest people when they're coming in and paying their tax this bill. This is true. Um, yeah. But that being said, yeah. um, you know, they, as I said, they always try to handle themselves mm -hmm. in a professional manner. And um, I think we all take a lot of great pride mm -hmm. in the the work that we're doing. Yes. And um, we always have to be mindful that we're there to serve mm -hmm. the citizens of the town. Yeah. Um, we work for them. Yep. They they pay their taxes. They're the mm -hmm. ones that pay our salaries. Mm -hmm. And so, at the end of the day, we have to be mindful of that mm -hmm. and, and remember that when we're when we're doing our jobs. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to bring up before we? I can't uh, think of anything right now, here? except that I do want people to know that um, we are very receptive to getting questions. If there's something that you maybe don't want to ask personally, but you would like to talk to. Um, somebody that's going to be on the show or a question to be asked, just send those questions in. My contact information will be at the end of the show as well. Or you can just go, go directly to Kevin. Yeah, and, and you can look up my contact information oh, yeah. on, on the, the website, website yeah. but I can give it out. It's, mm -hmm. you know, the number is 432-1100, uh, the extension is 120. Um, the email is uh, ksmith at londonderrynh.org. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, one of those two ways you'll be able to Absolutely. get a hold of me yeah. and, yeah. Um, you know, see if, if we can help you out with whatever the concern mm -hmm. is. Again, feedback mm -hmm. is, is great. We okay. welcome it and, and we want to hear it. Well, we're going to continue to tape Transparency in Government. And Kevin has already committed, as you heard earlier, to coming on um, at least once a month. If there are months when there's a lot going on, we can't cover it in an hour, maybe we'll do twice. I want you to know 
that, again, this is your show as far as I'm concerned, because you're going to generate the information that you want. You're going to tell us what you need, and we're going to fulfill that. And in addition to having Kevin do regular uh, visits with us, we're also going to talk to other elected officials or any other official in town that it becomes something that, that they could answer the questions of best. So it's not just once a month, it's whenever. And you can go to LACTV.com and if you go on to that website, you will find that you can go to, to CTV20, go to view, and you'll be able to search or just click on the show that you want to see. So you don't have to necessarily know exactly what time it's going to come on the air, because I know that can be a little bit difficult. They don't give us, they don't put us in TV Guide, I don't know why. <laughs> but anyway, um, so we're just going to be as accessible as we possibly can be, and I hope that you have enjoyed the show. I hope that you've really learned a lot from what Kevin has said. I think that the, the positive feedback is mm -hmm. really good, and I think that your attitude is just going to generate that, that people are going Great. to go, he's approachable, yes. and that's important. So that's the end of our show for today, and we hope that you'll be watching CTV 20. There are a lot of good programs, and we will see you next month with Kevin, and we'll have other politicians on at other times. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. It's been great. Yeah, it certainly has been. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Glad to have you.